The following podcast is run by a couple of former wheel turners and one pit guy. It's uh, meant for entertainment, not uh, not so much information, but sometimes there's some good information. Um, the opinions expressed are just, these are the morons on the show. Not necessarily right, not necessarily wrong, not uh, the views of any of the sponsors or anything like that. So uh, these guys, they're going to be talking, they might swear here and there, so if that offends you, uh, either uh, grow up or... Uh, Give a little permission for mom and dad. All right, race fans, episode number 219. I'm Ryan Aho, the legendary Burt Lehman, and Coach Kraus in the house with, with us again here tonight. Uh, how are you guys doing here this week? Doing good. Uh, I'm sitting in a hotel room in Ladysmith, Wisconsin. I'm here for a work thing, so uh, I'm on the western side of Wisconsin. <laughs> western side. All right, getting out of your element there. Hometown, of course, Rich Bishop, Eric Olson, a couple super stock guys. Me and Carl, of course, super stock guys. So we got to give a little love to the Ladysmith, Wisconsin. There's probably more than that, but them are a couple of the big notable ones right there. Coach Kraus, uh, um, I got a little somebody talking a little smack here, but we'll save that for just a second. You guys took the money, right? You and old man Bun Dan. I think you did. What'd you go one two in uh in the one to go show March Madness brackets? Is is that correct? That's pretty much how it uh, how it works. Uh, Dan Call, I think it was the Dirt Podcast Boys took all the money. Um, <laughs> You know, the funny thing is, Bert, I think, did you get like third or fourth or fifth, Bert? I don't know. I didn't look at the final standings. Um, I but was I had in the top 15. Well, Bert, I, do you remember, Bert, like the very first game? He says, here, thanks for the donation. I'm done yeah. or something. And Bert, <laughs> I think you picked UConn to win it. Um, and yeah, they I, won picked, it. I picked UConn to win it, but I had Kentucky in the final. In the yeah, final but we game. all did. So, I mean, pretty much everybody lost. So, I'm, I'm not... I, you know, Bert, you're you're a poor sport. You threw the towel in right away, <laughs> and then you would you would almost ended up in the money. We went to even gave you the money, so uh, I think it must be my coaching background that brought that in. The funny thing is with that bracket, Ryan, you want to know what I did with the bracket that I got second place in? I took all the high seeds, and then I just redid the finals and put UConn to win it. I get the money. That's how I roll. Nice, nice. I'd rather be lucky than good, right? Um, from what somebody says, you didn't do so good in another bracket. We'll save that for just a second. So episode 219 brought to you by Impact Health Sharing. So, folks, if, if you're in the market, if you're paying for your own health insurance, if you're paying too much, if you have employees, right, if you've got a big family, if, you got, if you're a farmer, trucker, self-employed, whatever it may be, and you're looking at the bottom line and you're like, why the hell am I paying so much money for something I basically never use because people pay for health insurance. They don't even go to the doctor. It's nice to have when you need it. But if you're looking at that and you're like, man, is there a way to maybe pay less? I have a way. Hit me up 218-969-1380. Message me on Facebook. I can get you a quote on a great product called Impact Health Sharing. See if we can save you a lot of money to spend on race car parts. So let's jump into the first uh, segment this week, guys. Let's start with fan questions because we got a couple pretty good ones here. One, it's always good when th somebody somebody throws a little shade on Coach Kraus, so that's always good, right? But a little bit of tire stuff, right? Um, we know that the contract is up with, with Soda and Hoosier um, at the end of 2024. So we actually have a question there, a little bit of information but first, I want to give a shout out to our good friend out in Sydney, Montana. That's Nick Hoff at Hard Charger Performance Specialties. So Nick is a guy that lived up in northern Minnesota for quite a number of years. Um, pitted for Provenzino, helped me out, built engines. He's been building engines, guys, for over 20 years, and he builds it for anything. Street stocks to late models, everything in between. Um, he's kind of got the only dyno where you can schedule time on the dyno within like a 500-mile radius up there of Sydney. Um, if you're a Wasota guy that runs a crate motor, especially out in that area, he's the guy that you send it to when that needs fixed. And 
it's a crate motor, so it's probably going to be needing fixed. That's just the way it is. Send it to Nick. And even if you're not over in that area and you're looking to purchase an engine or if you're looking to get your crate fixed, he has some great shipping options as well. Great guy, great service, and uh, tell you what, great performance with his stuff. That's hard charger performance specialties. And you can reach him at 406-478-4437. So, guys, our first one here came from a friend of the show, Quentin. And Quentin has actually sent us some stuff before. And he says, you know, you guys always talk about the importance of fan engagement. He goes, I want to make, I want to have a shout out here. I want to thank the Fiesta City Speedway. They did a March Madness bracket challenge. He said it was a great way to actually get the fans and the and the drivers kind of working together. He said it was a pretty cool deal. They gave a uh, free admission, some concession vouchers to people in the top three. And uh, a side note here, Coach Krause is uh, better at picking drivers than he is at picking basketball teams. Better luck next year, buddy. So a little bit of, I don't know how Quentin did. Did he win the brackets? I'm not really sure. Evidently, he must have beat you. I know he beat me. I looked today, and I can't remember who beat who who ended up winning it. But like you said, it was a cool deal. Um, I saw it right away, and obviously, it, um, as you know, I was I ran I was a weekly competitor at Fiesta City Speedway for a lot of years. Ran my streeter down there full time, and my super stock got a track championship down there. So uh, they treat you well down there, and they, it's always fun to go down there and get treated well. So it was, it was cool to see that and, and seeing all the drivers going through there. And like you said, seeing what drivers know how to pick them and those that don't know nothing about basketball. <laughs> I know absolutely nothing about basketball. I still did a bracket, but uh, I, I, I know nothing. In fact, I was surprised. I, I kind of enjoyed the women's tournament, right, better than the men's tournament. It just is what it is. So we uh, that was a little fan feedback there. Always fun to give a uh, little shout-out to that guy. And thank you, Fiesta City Speedway. A uh, pretty cool deal you did there. Um, Tony has a question. He says, what's the word on the tire situation with Wasoda for 2025, knowing that the contract is up at the end of 2024? Could the Wasoda Hoosier marriage be in jeopardy? Yes, it could be in jeopardy. So, guys, uh, I actually took the liberty. I, I spoke to uh, I spoke to some folks um, that were pretty heavily involved with racing. In fact, uh, Danny, um, who was on the Wasoda board, I actually had the liberty of speaking with him, and you know, uh, thoughts and prayers. Hopefully, he heals up. He's going through some. Um, health struggles right now so that's important to get him back up on his feet and kind of get him moving around but uh, I asked him straight out because and the reason I wanted to ask him what's going on is because he's kind of a little bit of a pit bull there's a couple of them on the board kind of excited about it what I mean by that is you know a couple years ago uh, a couple of the tracks decided hey we're going to make a motion we're going to increase the tire price by nine percent give a little bump over to hoosier hopefully they're going to be nice to us at the end okay now we we know how that went and it is what it is but here's the deal they weren't they weren't hoosier i tell you what guys they it, it literally is time for this monopoly to be over right because for years Hoosier's been the only game in town, and they flat out can charge whatever they want because all these series just really didn't have an option. Well, if you want tires, guess you're going to pay, you know, whatever we tell you you have to pay. So they Wasoda has done quotes in the past. I don't think they have in recent years. But he actually forced the issue and said, look, we're going to reach out to all these other tire manufacturers, and, and we're going to do our due diligence. We're going to get a quote. We're not We're not married to them. Yes. Hoosier, years ago, Hoosier, when it was a family-owned company, they had the back of Wasoda. Wasoda had a couple things go on. They needed a significant amount of money. That family stepped up, gave the money to, to Wasoda as a loan. Wasoda paid it back. But Hoosier now is owned by Continental Tire. This is a big corporation in Germany. Wasoda doesn't owe them anything. Right. And they don't give two shits about, I mean, quite honestly, dirt racing. I mean, Continental Tire as a company is a far bigger than what Hoosier is. So they got their quotes back, guys. And uh, I don't know the exact numbers, but as per quoted 
from a former Wasota board member that is involved that was involved with this process. American Racer came back significantly cheaper, and they're willing to give significantly more money to the drivers and the organization. Interesting. That is interesting. Now, that wasn't a solid locked in bid by either company. And, and out of out of respect, I mean, ever since Wasota has been a thing, it's cool. they've been partnered up in some way with Hoosier. They went back to Hoosier and said, look, we're not telling you the numbers. We will tell you this. You better sharpen your pencil because you're not even close, right? So I don't know if you guys remember this, 2007 DTRA came on, you know, onto the scene. They had the Goodyear deal. And guess what that did? That forced the hand of Hoosier. Competition always forces the hand. As a result of that deal, all the Wasota racetracks get $1,500 per class, max of four classes per year. So you can get, there's a lot of tracks out there getting a, a check for $6,000 from Hoosier. Well, they didn't do that out of the kindness of their heart. They did that because of direct competition with Goodyear. So one of two things is going to happen here. Either A, Hoosier is going to say, look, we're going to, we're sharpening our pencil. We're going to come back in. We're going to, and they come back in underneath American Racer. You stick with Hoosier, which is fine. But as a result of that, the tire price would be low because of the competition of American Racer or they're going to say, guys, hey, here's the deal. We can't compete. It is what it is. Here's our number. And with soda, jumps over to American Racer. Okay. As we can see in the dirt late model world, right? Brandon Overton and others, they're having good luck with the late model tire, right? The mod tire would be a little, mod super stock tire would be a little bit different than what the USRA tire is. That's a contract, uh, contractual deal between USRA and uh, American Racer. They can't get the same tire. That's just, so that's kind of the way that's written. So it would be slightly different, which is also, again, fine. But uh, your guys' thoughts. Okay, there I laid out the ground rules. Bert, I'm going to start with you. On the outside looking in, as a fan, been heavily involved with racing. Can you see change happening? Do you think there's a viable chance that with Soda and the Hoosier deal end and they come back in 2025 with American racers? Well, if everything that you stated is true and um, American Racer gives the best the best deal to Wissota, you know, cheaper tire, more money for the the drivers and in the tracks, I don't see how Wissota as an organization can look past that and just okay, fine, but we're we're gonna stay with Hoosier, you know, unless Hoosier betters their number. Um, I mean, competition is good. Uh, you should always put stuff out for bids or quotes, you know, whenever your contract is up. And I mean, like I said, if it's true that American racer deal is better, if they don't take that, I mean, what are the drivers supposed to think when they could be getting more money if, and keeping more money in their pocket, if they would switch and with soda doesn't. Yeah, it's going to be, and you know, the nice thing is, and, and it really wasn't this way for a long time, but there's multiple business people on the Wasota board. So they look at things differently because they're business minded. I think that's going to be good. Coach Krause, you're, you're kind of involved from all angles here. Track promoter, race car driver, been around the sport for your entire life. Is that, do you, what do you think is going to happen here initially on, on uh, what you know so far? Well, I know uh, you laid it all out, and we've talked about this multiple times. Uh, to be 100% honest, yeah, I got no idea. Um, I think the big thing is right now, um, listening and hearing everything, uh, well, so does in this for the drivers. I, I really do believe that. And we're at a big-time crossroads here, Ryan, with the cost of things. And if we have a chance to keep this tire cost down, um, it's going to really help. It, it might save racing, to be honest with you, Ryan. I know we've talked about that. Um Having 180, 185, 200, they're talking 230, $240 late model tires with Hoosier Bird. Um, we, what's that going to do to the tire? Uh, the late models around here, that's that's a big cost right there. So um, you're talking big time numbers. And I, I let everybody know, Ryan, you let everybody know about the 9%. We, I let everybody know about the 9% at the meetings last year and obviously did nothing. All it did was cost us drivers money. So that's my big takeaway was this 
Let's make sure that we're doing, we have to help keep the cost down here. Um, Cause if tires get that high, the car counts are going to be in trouble and there's going to be some race cars dropping like flies. There's no doubt about it. So that's my big takeaway. We got, we got to do what's right for the drivers here um, and getting the bids. It is what it is. Hey, it's, uh, you know, Hoosier was up. It was time. Let's, let's go out and get bids. Let's make sure Hoosier's in this for Wasoda and for the drivers. Um, so, like I said, I don't know what's going to happen. I'm glad there's negotiating going on. I'm glad they got this started already because it's going to be coming up on us a lot quicker. Um, they want to get something done. I had someone make a comment to me the other day. Well, I should, probably shouldn't buy a bunch of Hoosiers at the end of the year, right? I said, well, that's a good point. You know, a lot of, you know, sometimes you do. You have tires through the winter or whatever. Probably not going to be stockpiling Hoosiers at the end of the year. So hopefully we can have something done by then and um, like I said, the big thing is we, let's look out for the drivers, especially this day and age with the cost of everything. And I do want to add one thing. I mean, I don't know how, how you go about doing this, but if they, when looking at American racers bid, not only do you need to look at the bid, but you have to make somehow make sure that they can produce the number of tires that you're going to need, um, because anybody can just throw stuff out there, but um, you know somehow um, they need to get some sort of guarantee that the number of tires they're going to need will be able to be produced and available. Yeah, that was a concern going in, and uh, they feel pretty comfortable with uh, with the answers they've gotten from American Racer on that. Um, a couple of years ago, of course, all tire companies had a tire shortage, and uh, this year that's definitely not the case. So they're they feel confident there, but, you know, kind of a couple couple things to kind of end it on this is, you know, Coach mentioned the 9% increase. And, you know, as per Shannon, hey, you know, you take care of us now and we'll take care of you later. Well, I, it's not looking like that was the case, right? So I, you just take that for whatever it's worth. But I want to give a tip of the cap. I'm the first one to admit when Wasota does dumb shit, and they do, it just is what it is. I'll drop the hammer on them. We call it how it is. I am actually impressed with the way that they're handling this. They're doing their due diligence. And, and like Coach said, I, I think the people that are kind of running the show now are, are for the racers. I'm not saying that everybody ever you know involved before. I'm not saying there wasn't people that weren't. But they seem like they're kind of heading in the right direction right now. So I'm cautiously optimistic about where this tire situation is going to go. But you, you can rest assured that uh, every time we hear a little uh, little something about it, we'll be letting the fans know. That's for sure. So Pat has one here, follow-up from last week, kind of a segue off the tires as well. And uh, he goes, Ryan, you said last week uh, eliminate rules if they can't tackle, right? You know, uh, trash control, porting heads, make tire dope legal, right? He goes, the question I have is this. Can with soda or tracks – even actually afford to test tires on a regular basis. So coach, I called down to Blue Ridge Labs. I talked to Kim. I had a conversation with her. That's a nice thing about trucking. I can get a phone number, make some phone calls, right? And uh, great gal to talk to. I mean, uh, give me a lot of information about how the whole process works. So a hundred bucks a tire, okay, for the Wasoda, for all the Wasoda tracks, it's a hundred bucks per sample per tire so if you send an a and b sample and you want them both tested that's 200 bucks so it's 100 bucks per tire and that'll get you the it will either meets or does not meet the benchmarks if you want like the full spreadsheet of like hey here's everything that's in the you know that's wrong with it that's an extra 100 to 150 dollars depending on how long that list is now we talked a little bit about we wish there was more transparency in the late model tire when Pierce and them guys were, were DQ'd. She's like, don't believe everything you read on the internet because the first thing they got back basically said they didn't meet the benchmark. The extra money was paid. The appeal process happened, and all of those drivers got a printout with what was wrong with their tires. He, what they do with it from there is completely up to them. He, she said, but the transparency, rest assured, was there and i don't know why they're why they're saying otherwise so Did, with that said Bert, go ahead the driver got the printout or the sanctioning body got the printout driver i asked that because okay. that was my first All thought right. did they send it to world racing group 
upon appeal from the three drivers, all three drivers got that print okay. out. They they have that in their in their hands. So Coach Krause, Viking Speedway. Okay. Um, you have essentially four. I mean, you got Horneting and a tire test in Hornets. It is what it is. But you have street stocks, you have Midwest mods, you have super stocks, you have modifieds, you have four regular classes, four with soda classes on a regular basis. So let's say you decide, you know what, we're going to start testing tires at the Viking Speedway. And you're going to do the top five each night. Well, five times four is 20 times 100 bucks a pop. That's two grand a night. A, can you afford as a racetrack, as a club run track, you look at, there's a lot of club run tracks, organizations around. Can you eat $2,000 even one time, let alone 15 to 20 times throughout a season? Absolutely not. You can't do it. You 100% can't do it. Um, maybe one night, maybe. Um, that's still a pretty good chunk of change. You're going to have to pick a night, go back and look, and, hey, we made money this night. Let's do tire testing. But that's usually not how it's going to go, but no. You, there's there's no chance you could maybe one night but not on a consistent basis absolutely not you know and then i had somebody say well have lasota do it right well there's i don't know the exact number but let's call it 50 right let's say there's give or take right let's say that there's 50 lasota tracks some have like five or six classes some have one or two so let's call it let's just call it let's go with the number four i mean we're just using this for numbers well if you take 50 right times four classes 50 times 20 with soda would have to pay a hundred grand a year if they just wanted to do tire testing in the top five at every Wasoda track at least once that's not possible right so with that said being that most tracks can't afford it the sanctioning body certainly can't afford it you know it ain't going to be tested drivers you do with you do with whatever you want with that information all right you do what you want with that information but the fact is, that's why people roll the dice, right? Because they're like, they ain't going to check it anyway. They, they, these tracks have no money. You do with that what you want as a race car driver. But that's exactly why I say they just got to get rid of the rule, make it legal, allow doping of tires, because tracks and series can't afford to check it anyway. Just make it legal and, and call it a day. So that's a good question by Pat. So, all right, guys, little racing this past weekend. Let's jump into the top five moments and stories of the week brought to you by our friend Brad Parson, Brad Parson Soil and Egg Solutions. Now, we we're got on the topic of surfactants. Surfactants make the water molecules smaller, right? Some people are putting, they make it bigger so that water molecules can get into the soil, okay? You wanted me to touch on that. But with that said, if you're a farmer, right? Uh, northwestern Minnesota, North Dakota, South Dakota. If you're looking to be more profitable, have higher yields, what do you need to do? You need to have the right chemicals in your spray packages. You guys know that the, the right chemicals in your spray packages, that equals big results, and big results equals big money. Well, why not, right? Why not take a few minutes and call Brad and get educated on, on the products that he has to offer? His number, 320-219-3542. Give him a call. See what he has to offer. Get the data. See if it's something that can help you in 2024. Guys, number five. Let's go. Uh, well, we're going to call it local late model racing. We'll start with that. Uh, number five. Who wants, to, who wants to show out what happened over at the Cedar Lake Speedway? Uh, well, I'll touch on it. Uh, I did. <laughs> I saw the last few laps of of the late model feature, and uh, it was a it was a good race there at the end. And uh, Sam Mars uh, held off the Grizzly veteran of Pat Doerr, uh to win at Cedar Lake Speedway. Um, I'm not sure if. Well, it's probably his first feature win in at least in a uh, in a Wasota late model or. A, was soda type late model. <laughs> first win at Cedar Lake ever. Period. Yeah. Okay. First feature right. win at Cedar Lake period. And so, I mean, Sam Mars, I mean, let's face it. That's a legendary family, right? Jimmy Mars, oh, without question, one of the best ever in our area to ever strap into a late model, right? I mean, what he's done has been um, unbelievable. 
grandpa on the other side, right? Paul Gilbert. He has a storied career. You know, so I guess you can kind of call him a kind of a third generation racer because I don't know if Jimmy Mars's dad raced. I, I guess I don't know that. But, you know, he's kind of, he, he started racing a little open stuff, parked it in victory lane for the first time. And Pat Doerr, right? So, I mean, Pat Doerr's won a lot of races at Cedar Lake Speedway. He kind of made him look silly for the majority of the race. Now, I'm going to ask you guys this. How much of that was the fact that Sam Mars has already been in the car a few nights this year, right? Kind of in a rhythm. And Pat Doerr, that's his first night out all season long. How much How much of him being faster than Doerr was that? I'll let Coach answer this one because he, he sits behind the wheel every every now and then. <laughs> well, when it comes to Pat Doerr, I don't think uh... – it's riding a bike for him, especially at Cedar Lake. I mean, I guess it'd be kind of like me at Viking Speedway, and I'd have to say, or whoever running their local track. But, you know, the question is, was, was Sam Mars, must have been in his open car with the restrictor on it. Is that the rules at late models? I don't know what he had in there. I mean, they have obviously Wasoda stuff, right? So but his, um, his car had, his the car he won with had zero Wasoda stickers on it. Um, and I know he's got a full blown Wasoda car. Okay. So I don't know if that was his open car with restrictor because you know when they run remember when dillard and ricky and all those guys ran they had to had to put restrictors in so maybe they have to have it restricted um i would assume that was probably the case so um like i said cool cool moment for him um it's a really good battle um and was it is, is it hipden is i was i saying that right colin um, hipden yeah colin hipden i i I've heard the name, seen the name, don't know much about him. He was rolling the bottom, and I, I thought he was going to get them both there for a while. He was absolutely bolted on the bottom, and lap traffic kind of screwed him up, and then they got to switching lanes, and he got out of his rhythm a little bit. But obviously cool to see Sam get a win there, and and uh, especially beating you know the all-time great at Cedar Lake Speedway, Pat Doerr. That, that's a big accomplishment. Well, and Skeeter Esty jumped out to the lead early. He broke something. I'm not exactly sure what broke and ended up getting a DNF. And then Sam Mars just put it on cruise control, guys. He was gone. And then late in the race, he started getting a little free, and Door started kind of coming into his own. His car freed up. And like you said, Hibden was there, and, and they had a good – I mean, it was a good battle. Hibden actually got into second there, got next to Mars for the lead. Guys, what impressed me the most, though, was this. Door was kind of poking right up inside of him there with like two to go, right? Right inside of him. And and Mars could see, either he could see or he was getting signals, one or the other, that they were getting good runs off the bottom of four. And he ran the top that whole race and he slammed the door on him in getting into three on the last lap and literally blocked any opportunity for a slider. Super smart race by Sam Mars. Congratulations. That leads into number four, where a guy maybe wasn't so smart <laughs> in the last in the last lap. Kraus, number four. Yeah, it was um, I was watching it live, and I I forgot already who um, Zach was Zach Mitchell. Mitchell. Correct? Wasn't I giving yep. you the play by play? Um, and they were at was it East Alabama? Yep. So I do remember, right? I was Saturday night was multiple tvs multiple things going on um there i had three tvs going there were split screens i was watching pretty much everything i could so um it's good good track that was a really really good track it had some grip in it from the get-go ryan we've seen bert we've seen races at east alabama where that baby's rubbered up for 60 70 straight laps um <laughs> I remember the one year Madden one, he came in and changed tires and went back out and, and won. Uh, he ended everybody else getting flats and he ended up, he had new tires on and he won. So, um, and place is fast. It's fun. It's packed. Announcers get into it. And, um, Zach Mitchell was really, really good. I was waiting for his tires to go away because he was driving so hard. Um, it was, I mean, he was getting after it and, you know, Kyle Bronson, he was, he, he, he actually found a little bit better lane. Um, he was really searching in one and two, and he was searching in three and four, trying to get that run. And he got quicker coming out of four when he started cutting down a little bit. Um, and Zach was moving, and then Bronson finally found it in one and two. And you knew if Bronson ever caught him, you knew what was coming. It was going to be slide job heaven, and it was. Um, chucked one hard over in one and two, cleared him big time. 
Um, Zach dropped back underneath him. I'm um, then obviously coming for a checker. Bronson uh, chucked it in there hard. And he, what he did was he kind of parked it basically. <laughs> he wanted to slow the momentum down and take away the middle. So Zach couldn't turn back down under him and they basically made contact, drove right into him. Um, I thought it was good, hard, fun, clean racing. You're coming for the win. Um, you know what? It is what it is. And, you know, like you said, Ryan, I know we talked, you know, Mitchell should have maybe cut down a half a lane, dropped down to the bottom, going into three and four and slid up and took, he would probably took the air right off of Bronson's car and Bronson's would have probably pushed right up the hill going into three. So, but Hey, it is what it is. Um, they came across the scale and all I saw was a herd of Buffalo. <laughs> I, I'm like, Oh boy, this going down and sounds like the crews were getting it. That's usually how it always happens is Ryan well, the crews are the crazy guys. Um, the drivers never do anything dumb or wrong. It's always the pit crews, Bert. You've been there. Um, it's always the pit crew that gets you in trouble. So um, there was a herd of Buffalo running through. Bronson had a great interview. At the end of the day, you know, Kyle Bronson, he's going to win. It's checkers or wreckers with Bronson. He was either going to end up over in Tennessee or he was going to be in East Alabama victory lane. Um, and he got, like he said, I'm going home with the 10 grand. Zach Mitchell isn't. <laughs> Yeah, and about the fight thing, um, well, first of all, yeah, I didn't have a problem with what Bronson did either. I mean, like Coach said, it was just good, hard racing. Um, you know, he didn't take him out or anything. But anyway, um, I was watching afterwards because I think it was you, Coach, that sent out, there's a fight. So then I went, <laughs> so then I logged in, but by that time, they were interviewing Bronson and the uh, in victory lane but anyway i i re-watched it and yeah when the herd of pick when the herd of people went rushing near the tech shed um if you watch the video mitchell's not even out of his car yet he's like three cars back he wasn't even out of his car because then he comes after everything kind of got broken up then he started walking towards that area so um so yeah, it, it was probably the pit crews and they they got together and whatnot. But but overall, I mean, it was it was good hard racing the last few laps, and I didn't have an issue with what happened. Pit crew, pit crew guys, you guys are <laughs> troublemakers. That that's the problem. All right, number three has a new driver emerged as the hottest driver in dirt late model racing, Bert. Uh, well, definitely this last weekend. <laughs> I'm, I'm assuming you're talking about uh, Mikey Marlar. Mike Marlar, he's been on fire. Bert, so obviously he doubled up right at the gap at yeah. Volunteer Speedway at the XR Super Series event down there. But he has six straight podiums, and he's won three of his last six. He's been on fire. He's been really good. Um, last year, RTJ, Pierce, Huddy. Right before that, Davenport. Before that, Overton. Before that, it was uh, Brandon Shepard. Is it Marlar's turn? Is he going to be the guy we're talking about at the end of the year, having that big monumental year? Well, I'm accused of being wishy washy, so I'm going to say yes. <laughs> Coach Kraus, what do you think? <clears throat> well, I, I definitely think he is too. He's. Um... He's experienced. He's got good equipment under his belt. I, he's driving with a little chip on his shoulder too. There's no doubt about it. Um, I, I thought I went back. I had to look cause I thought he won every race from the front row, but he didn't Friday night. He actually won the uh, last heat. So, or whatever he, he started fourth on Friday. Um, and then obviously on the front row on Saturday. So, um, it's qualifying. Well, um, you got to, you still got to win your heats, especially with them straight up formats, what he's been doing, starting up front. And you, and you, and you, with these shows, Ryan, Bert, you have to start up front. Yeah, it, especially with the way the track was, wasn't real racy, wasn't a lot of passing going on. There wasn't, you know, some guys are coming from deep, but it's not, you know, you put a cushion on that place, it might be a little bit different ball game, but he's a force to be reckoned with. Um, I think he's a little butt hurt that nobody's talking about him. Um, he's got a little chip on his shoulder. Um, and it's, it's exactly what we need, guys. We need another guy in the mix. Um, and he, he's he's kind of an old battle axe right now. And he's I don't think he likes the young guys. There's no doubt about it. He doesn't like the young guys. He never has. He never will. So it's good to see a veteran up there. And he's going to mix it up. It's going to be fun to watch. 
One hundred percent. He's talented, and uh, I don't know that I'm a big uh, Mike Marlar guy, right? I mean, I respect his ability. He's super fast. I mean, I, I, I don't. I mean, for one, he's got an ugly ass red car. I mean, Kraus, you know, people with red cars are jackasses. Just is what it is. Imagine how fast he'd be if it wasn't red. That's. I mean, me and Tonga say that all the time. But no, you're spot on. I mean, he's a veteran. He's a former. He has what? Does he have one or for sure one, right? World of Outlaw Championship, or does he have a couple? I think just one. Yeah. So I mean, I mean, he knows how to get her done. And I tell you what, when the money's been on the line this year, he's been really good. So a couple guys off the pace, he's kind of stepped up. It, it could be his year in 2024. Number two, doing it the hard way. Kind of the driver of the week, another, another great finish. USMTS Modifieds this past weekend at the Humboldt Speedway in Kansas. Coach Kraus, your thoughts on Minnesota Mod East Jake Tim? Yeah, heck of um he's got to get um he was tough format. He got he got stuck in a couple tough heats. Um especially on a couple of those heats on Saturday, even Friday it was like did they pull out and it was the all-star of all-stars and I get it's passing points, but the way the track was racing, um, you know, I think, you know, like Ebert, the first night went from ninth to fifth and got to start on the pole of the B, but still, if you get win the B, you're still starting pretty deep. So, um, it was, it was a tough deal with the passing points. So I can see where some of those guys had to start in the back, um, and then work their way forward. And, And for the most part, um, you know, I was, I was hoping there was a little bit more of a high side, um, cause he was, he was rolling the bottom. He got all his guys on the bottom right away. Um, and a bunch of those races and a lot of guys did. Um, and then great battle up front and boy, I tell you, he's going to be a force to be reckoned with in that thing. And like I said, he's not afraid to muck it up. He's going to throw slide jobs. He's going to drive hard. Um, so it's good to see a local guy like Jake, um, a, a get a win. Um, would have been really interesting to see what would have happened on Saturday. Um, with with that race, with I don't know how many laps they were going to go, but I was hoping they were going to get in after the rain because um, it would have really woke up that track. Um, you would have had some really good racing there. So uh, just good to see him doing well racing with the big boys. He's fitting right in, and he's going to be a force all year long. Yeah, leading the points, of course. And, you know, 20th to 4th on night one, 14th to 1st on night two. And what a finish. I mean, Darren Fuquay unbelievable i mean he won on night number one and he actually took the lead on kind of the last lap there coming to the whites he took the lead and and jake tim kind of elbow you know not elbow he didn't no contact but muscled his way by and just flat out overdrove him getting in and kind of took away that slider jake tim i tell you what looking very good for a uh, another minnesota championship kind of hope he can kind of finish that off but the track was good. I mean, I've seen a lot of races at Humboldt where it's kind of been one laney or whatever. Really good racetrack down there. And I tell you what, the one thing I noticed with USMTS mods, and I get it, man, Van Dan, big IMCA guy, nothing against IMCA guy. We think USMTS better, but it just is what it is, okay? Um, but the fact is, I, the, if you look at the results on my race pass, every single night, there's guys plus 10, plus 12, plus 15 up into the top five. I mean, the format that they're using, you know, the draw for the heat, passing points, heats aren't typically very racy, so sometimes you get buried, you're in trouble. But the tracks have been good in the future. They've been putting on a hell of a show, so going to be interested to see if Jake Tim can continue to carry on. Bert, any thoughts there on Jake Tim before we jump on to number one? No, I mean, you guys – covered it you know the thing that's really impressive about him is it doesn't matter where he starts um you know he gets to the front and even when he does have problems in a feature he goes to the pitch changes a tire does whatever he needs to do comes back out and still gets a top five finish so uh you know so even when he's had bad luck he's been able to get good finishes and being able to drive from the back to the front and getting good finishes on on bad nights um those are two things you need to win a championship when the hell did he learn how to run the bottom end of last year (laughs) you got him catfishing down on the tires i mean we're talking like the king of the slide jobs banging the boards jake tim and now it's like he's matured into that you know i don't need to sell t-shirts quite as much i just want to get down here win races 
Tell you what, he's going to be dangerous uh, to carry out the rest of the season. So our top story of the week brought to you by Fastlane Motorsports and Powder Coating of Ashland, Wisconsin. Proud sponsors of the number one series in all of Wissota Racing, the Northland Superstock Series. Home of the Galloper Chassis. They service a lot of racetracks. Great group of guys up there in northern Wisconsin. Uh, sandblasting, powder coating, custom fab, whatever you need. Get a hold of Chris and the gang up at Fastlane Motorsports and Powder Coating in Ashland. With Soda's first winner of the 2024 season. Bert, did you watch the best class in, in racing? Did you watch it? I'm guessing no, because you're a late model guy. You're at, <laughs> I know Coach Krause watched it, though. Legendary number eight super stock storming to the win. Coach Krause, your thoughts on Matthew Larson? Well, yeah, it's the only race I watched at Cedar Lake because it was the Wasota Super Stocks. We're going to watch those rest of those classes <laughs> over there. Bert, those non Wasota classes, we're not going to do that. So, of course, it got my eye. Um, second highest car count, it was the Super Stocks. Um, it was the Midwest Mods. We're going to call them the Midwest Mods or whatever the B Mods or whatever they call them over there. And then uh, the Super Stocks had the next highest car count out of all the classes there. So, good to see. Um, and you're going to get some travelers. And, you know, obviously, I think. It helped their uh, car counts bringing in with soda, you know, the super stocks for sure. And um, um, you got Dexon Cook, Matthew Larson, um, and obviously uh, the 55 car, uh, the Mater machine um, was running too. And boy, they, they put on a show. They put on a really good show, three wide multiple times. And I don't, Mater broke, correct? Um, I don't know what ended up happened there. Did you see what happened there? Did he get a flat or what I happened did. there? They come off a of turn two and and it kind of bottlenecks there a little bit if the guy's running the bottom and there was it didn't look like there was any contact made I mean it was just tight close quarter racing and it, it looked like he was trying to give Larson a little room Larson was coming up no contact and he just clipped the wall with the right front in the middle of the back straightaway and I don't know if it was just a tire if he broke something off the right front but yeah he got in the fence coming down the back stretch yeah and then. Um... And I don't know how old he is. I know um, I was actually, um, I know Brent and Matt, they were, um, I got in a message and I was helping them with some gear selections last year, the year before at KRA. They were doing some traveling over in this area. Or wondering, hey, what gear did you run? What gear did you run there? So I got to, to helping them all, helping. He, obviously, he's his dad's on the road um, and, you know, he's running. So you got to get uh, get some stuff going there. But huge to see him get a win and. And to hold off Dex and Cook, one of the fastest, you know, super stocks in all of soda right now, and and hold off all those locals um, at Cedar. So um, it's good to see, uh, you know, good car count at Wasoda. Good to see, um, you know, arguably probably the best race of the night. Um, they definitely put on a show. So, um, you know, but Ryan, make sure get those Wasoda stickers on your car, Ryan. You, you're the one that's getting all butter. I don't know, Bird, do you even notice that? Someone sent me a message and um i can't remember who i was talking to uh, something happens everybody messaged me why come he doesn't have a soda stickers what's this rule what's this rule i'm like well i guess i got to keep my mouth shut when i go to the meetings from now on so um i would assume there's going to be some i get it, it's first night rap companies are usually putting getting your stickers on your car so make sure you get your soda stickers on your car but good to see him get the win and, and being fast out of the gate I'm glad they didn't DQ him for no Wasota stickers. I've seen that before. It's like <laughs> DQing somebody for wheel stickers. That would have drove me bonkers. Nobody, I mean, I get it. Everybody just wants to win, but nobody wants to win that way. But yeah, you're right. Drivers, that you do not want to get disqualified for stupid shit, that, right? So get your Wasota stickers on the car. Please do that. But a lot of people don't know. I mean, first of all, he also drove by Dexton. Funk. That That's not easy to do, right? He drove by Dexton. And uh, Redetsky was kind of in that mix for a second there at the end, but he was a little bit off. But uh, a lot of people might not know this, right? I mean, if you're in that area, for sure you do. But Matthew Larson, his dad is the B1 bomber, Brent Larson. Okay. Now, so his grandpa, Dennis Larson, race, so third generation racer. And I'll just say it like it is, right? People watch Brent Larson now and they're like, he's, got, he's just not been competitive over the last few years. And they know him as the B1 bomber. Guys, he was always number eight. I knew Brent Larson as eight. That's what Matthew Larson is now as eight. When he was in the Superstock and them old Rush Rockets back in the early 90s, 
He was a freaking missile. I'm telling you what, he was good. And then he had back-to-back championships with the eight. I believe it was the eight at Cedar Lake still at the time. But he was eight in the late models, and then he's transitioned over to the IOU one and B1 and whatever. So I'm just going to say it right now. Brent Larson, okay? Get that number one bullshit off your car. It's stupid. It's ridiculous. It's slow. It's got to go, okay? Brent Larson, you got to go back to number eight. Because that's where you won the most races. Get rid of this number one stuff. So congratulations, though, Matthew Larson. Also, he, uh, in dominating fashion, won the USRA late model A-Main over there, too. So he actually doubled up at a, at a great night there on Cedar Lake Speedway at their opener. So a few things to touch on here, maybe kind of uh, that we maybe haven't. So a little, little closing thoughts from this past week's events. But um Who's the chassis builder? Who's the official chassis builder of the One to Go Show, Cross? That's uh, Turbine Chassis, brought to you by uh, Flat Out Performance over in Hancock, Minnesota. Uh, so make sure if you need any of your chassis needs modifieds, um, they're building modifieds, folks. And they're Mr. Ryan Flatten got pretty quick last year. Expect him to have a have another solid year. Um, super stocks, those things have been fast for years, Ryan. You know that. Um, I've won a lot of races, championships in those. Um, so you need any parts over in this area, any chassis work done, make sure you get a hold of Jeff Flatten, Hancock, Minnesota, Flat Out Performance, and Turbine Chassis. Absolutely. So I'm going to mention just a couple events here. We touched on some of the big stuff, but if there's any other closing thoughts, any other thoughts that you have from these particular events, go ahead, shout them out. Let's start with Cedar Lake Speedway. Let's start with our opener. Of course, we talked about a couple things there. Bert, did you watch anything from Cedar? Did you watch the late models? Did you did you get a chance to jump on and watch Cedar? I didn't get a chance to watch anything else from Cedar. Kraus, did you watch Cedar other than the Supers, or is that all you watched? I watched the end of the late model deal. Um, I watched tidbits of the Midwest mods. Um, every time I would watch, there'd be a yellow, and then I'd watch again on a restart, and there'd be another yellow, so I decided not to uh, watch them anymore. Um, but it was, like I said, there was so much stuff, so much going on with TV and, um, you know, car counts, so I don't think were what they were expected. Um, could be many reasons with that. Maybe it's too early, uh, you know. Maybe it's too early to race. I think the snow really threw a damper into things, into people's moods. I really, I really do. People, we got all that snow, and I think people got depressed. They said, "I ain't gonna work on my car." So, um, and then, you know, the flip side is I didn't really, you know, pay attention to much of their classes, but uh, watched a little bit here and there um, just to see was there. They started super early, um, so you know, with that change, I think that might have thrown a, um, you know, a monkey wrench into things too. The fans, maybe they're expecting it to be at seven, then it was started at three or four, whatever time it was. So. Um, you know, car counts, you know, fan counts. It was hard to tell, um, you know, pay-per-views were okay. Uh, you know, the racing was decent at times. I, I don't know. Maybe it's, maybe it's too early, Ryan and Bert to race. I don't know. Yeah, maybe now it never used to be right. I remember going to Cedar Lake openers back in the late nineties, early two thousands. And I mean, it was jam packed. There was a ton of cars, big crowds, times have changed. It is what it is. I will say this. I was skeptical, right? They started early. Well, they started like 4 o'clock or something, right? It was pretty early. The features were pretty good. The track had some moisture. The racetrack was good. So good job to the Cedar Lake Speedway track crew over there. Um, usually when it's day racing, but there must have been moisture in there, and they wanted it sealed over so it didn't turn into a plowed field. Tiny little bit of character, but uh, I thought that there's grooves all over that place. Um, so, like you said, super light car cone, um, but it is what it is. Hopefully that changes here in weeks to come. Um, you mentioned Colin Hibden. He's an IMCA mod guy. Um, he's actually from Pahrump, Nevada. Um, buddy of mine, John, is from Pahrump, Nevada. Actually, John is is one of the main guys with Dirt Race Central. Um, him and Ben are, are kind of the two main components. There's a lot of people that make that deal work, but he's one of them. And uh, he actually lives up in North Dakota now. And it sounds like he's going to run the NLRA series and possibly run um, quite a bit of the challenge series and a lot of specials. So look forward to seeing that number 48. He looked pretty good. Podium finish night number one in a late model. Peyton Hansen. 
um, youngster. I don't know if he's around 18, 19, 17, 18, 19 years old. Um, I believe that was his first career modified a main win. So he parked in victory lane and car count was light, but I mean, Mike Anderson was there, right? Michael Truscott. There's still a couple of good cars that he had to beat and he did it. So congratulations, Tate and Hanson and Brandon Jensen doing Brandon Jensen things and kind of give him an ass whoop and they're in the B mods. It's just what he does. Um, World of Outlaw Sprint Cars, they had two shows this past weekend. US 36 Speedway and the Wildcat Showdown and Arrowhead Speedway had the Jason Johnson Classic. What stuck out to you? What do we need to touch on here from the World of Outlaw Sprint Cars? Well, up until this point, uh, we had no repeat winners uh, in the World of Outlaw Sprint Car Series. And now after this weekend, we have two of them. Uh, cause David Gravel won on, uh, won the first race and then, uh, uh, hot and child, uh, won the second one, but he probably should have won two races <laughs> over. He, he probably should have won both races cause he was leading and he just punted that car. I, I don't know what he was thinking. It's almost like he drove in. He wasn't expecting that car to be as slow as it was or something. Cause he drove into the corner and just hit the rear end and he spun himself out. Uh, but otherwise he probably would have won that race too. Well, there's a reason our, our nickname for him for the last several years has been buggy Bobby, right? Because a couple of years back, Bobby Pierce could put on the fastest lap of a race and then he'd drive off the track, drive through the infield, rip somebody's hood off. That's Sheldon Hottenschild, right? Sheldon Hottenschild could be the fastest guy out there. He's super fun to watch, but my goodness, I mean, over the track, through the infield, running into lap cars. It's just it's just what he does. Can you guys see him? Is is he is that a phase that he can kind of work through, or has it been long enough now that that's just kind of who he is? Well, he he's it's who he is, Ryan, but I'm gonna tell you something, and we're gonna talk about this in my bold predictions. He's got to get consistent here if he wants to be running the top five. A, consistently every night, getting podiums, getting wins, and then finishing up there in points. Because um, you, you can't win one night and end up in the grandstand the next night rolling and tumbling. So it's it's a phase. Um, Ryan, you were young and dumb once behind the wheel. I was young and dumb once behind the wheel. We all were. So, um, you know, we're all old and wise now. We're, oh, yeah, it's, yeah, it's $200 for third. Well, yeah, it's, well, I think I'll just sit here. You know what I mean? It's a, Back in the day, it was checkers or wreckers. I was you were taking the four hundred dollars home, or you're going home with the tow money, and you didn't really care. So, um, but if you want to win championships, be consistent. Um, and I think at the end of the day, listen, it's Hodchild. You got the last name Hodchild. You better be winning races and winning champions. His dad's one of the all-time greats. There's no doubt about it. Um, he's probably in the top five all time. Um, so he's uh, it's it's a phase. There's no doubt about it. But he the big thing is he he's he's so fast at times. Uh, he had he should have won both those. He doesn't hit that lap with how narrow the track was on Friday. There was nobody gonna pass him. Um, then you know he whooped him on Saturday too. So he's got to get consistent finish races. He ain't that far out of the point deal. So he's got to get consistent. Hopefully uh, be there towards the end. Well, he's just like his dad, right? His dad was fast, but I don't think he ever won a championship because he's kind of the same guy. I right? think they call him the wild child for a reason, right? So, um, and the track was narrow, but it, I thought I thought the track was pretty darn good at US 36. There was moisture, gravel, gravel, and shots went one, two, and both of them started pretty deep in that deal. Um, Macedo, did you see him yard sale, Rico? Yeah. <laughs> he kind of drove over the embankment. It was racing deal he, he over he drove over the embankment on the bottom shoved up the track how neither one of them rolled there was multiple rollovers in the race and how neither one of them rolled is kind of miraculous but um the racing was pretty darn good j mac back in the united states he's gonna follow the high limits um good to see him back he actually looked like he had quite a bit of speed um and then like you said sheldon won did you see the drama with uh Hot sauce Giovanni Selzy and Jacob Allen. Yeah, on, on Twitter or Facebook or X, so at, at Arrowhead, they're battling up up in the top three yeah. there. And and Gio cleaned off his left front. Like right getting into one in the middle of the front straightaway. And yeah, Jacob Allen posted on there on Twitter. 
they are X or whatever the heck it's called now that, you know, kind of waiting for uh, Gio to come over here and help me with this or something along that. And they kind of went back and forth and, and probably more so Stelzy was kind of throwing some big shots yeah. at, at <laughs> like personal shots. I mean, yeah. is, guys, is that going to carry over to the next time they race against each other? I, I think when somebody throws personal shots, uh, you kind of tuck them in the back of your mind and uh, you don't forget about those. Coach Krause, how much does uh, how much does Jacob Allen wish that he had a late model or a street stock so that he could absolutely yard sale him next time he sees him? Because that's a little tougher to do in a sprint car. You, it's, you use them as a weapon. You're going to end up going over the top of the fence all by yourself. So what, what's your thoughts with this whole situation? Yeah, it's um, the, the tough part about usually it's, you know, I'm going to bring the coach out with me. I tell my players to get the license plate number and wait till you get it because they race against each other every single week. Um, it's no different if someone does something dumb. One of my, we're playing a hockey team. One of their players does something dumb. Get the license plate number. Remember it. We still got them eight more times this year. You know what I mean? So that's, I think a lot of people are doing that these days where, um, we had feuds. We're going out there doing it every week. Um, but it's you got it's too much on the line, too much money on the line, too much stuff going on. But they don't forget. The drivers don't forget. We don't forget. You know, next time if there's a restart, you know, maybe squeeze them up a little bit, or you're you you can do little things here and there to get back at them. So it's definitely it's going to be a feud that's going to keep going. And at the end of the day, that's what us fans want. We want to we want to see a little feud in action. Bert. I remember going inside the old 29 star hauler and on his whiteboard in there, right? He had numbers. They had like cute little drawings of cars. They had like, <laughs> like, it was like a whole like a uh, art gallery there, like a big giant. Uh, who was in, was Blair in charge of the hit list there? Shane. Shane was Shane. the artist. <laughs> uh, it was a, you do us, we do you twice. And then it turned into twice. You do us, we do you. Then it went, you do us, we do you twice. Um, and we write down numbers on the board and we got, I, there's a couple crossed off, so I must've done something right. But, uh, if you hit the 29 car, you got up on the whiteboard, you got your name on the whiteboard. So like I said, those drivers, we don't forget. <laughs> He's not lying. I had that on my shroud. We had a hit list on the shroud. So, so yeah, uh, sometimes you kind of keep them in the memory bank. So it'll be interesting to see. And, and remember Jacob Allen's running with the high limits and, and uh, Geo, of course, is running with the World of Outlaws, but they will cross paths a few more times this year. So something to keep an eye on to see if that uh, melds into more or if it kind of just stays where it's at. Point leader right now, World of Outlaws, David Gravel, Donnie Schatz, I think he's still in second. Um, any Anything there, Kroos? you think uh, any surprises in the points? No, not really. I, I think the big thing is now is who's going to knock Gravel off. Um He's kind of the guy right now without sweet and obviously shots of shots, but you know, shots hasn't been this high up in the points in the last few years. So that's, it's a big thing right now. Who can anybody catch gravel? Um, can Selzy rebound? He had the point lead for a few weeks. Now he doesn't. Is there anybody else below that can come up? So the big thing is who's going to knock off David Graff? Cause I think, you know, looking at it, he's the star right now. He's, he's the fast guy. He's consistent. Uh, there's no doubt about it. So that's my big thing is, can Geo rebound? What shot's going to do? Can, can, can Gravel might run away with it. it? It's a strong possibility right now. He just makes it, this thing's over. A lot of season left, but but you never know. So it's going to be fun. It's going to be interesting. And um, those guys put on a show every single night. I was super excited when they said, we're cutting this to 30 laps on Saturday because um, that place was eating tires, I guess. Um, so it was as soon as I heard 30 laps, I'm like, this is going to be awesome. And then it, it was a good race. Absolutely. So let's jump into the USM. Oh, Bert, I, I, got one, I have one thing to add. Um, Ryan, I don't think that you should expect the Christmas cards from uh, Bill Baylog. Um, ever since you spoke highly of him, he has had nothing but bad luck. <laughs> Did you see what happened to him this last last week? I, I did, but why don't you go ahead and share it? You're exactly right. I mean, he had looked really good. He was like constantly in the top five, and it's just gone to shit. Yeah, um, 
I can't remember which track it was at, but he was running second in his heat race. And uh, on the last, uh, it was the last lap, last corner, I believe. And uh, he got tangled with a lap car and, and, and flipped his sprint. So uh, yeah, he just hasn't had any good luck since, uh, since uh, Ryan spoke highly of him. <laughs> uh, I, I got to take the blame. So hate mail, if you're a Bill Baylog fan, I, I, I guess I'll take it on the chin. It is what it is. <laughs> All right, so USMTS at Humboldt. We talked about Jake Tim. We talked about Darren Fuquay. Anything else sticks out to you guys? Of course, night three rained out. They might be rescheduling that. Haven't quite heard what they're going to do. Anything else stick out to you guys from the USMTS races this past weekend? Have you ever seen a big concrete block get knocked out of the fencing at a racetrack? No, that was interesting. So night number two, a guy blew, or night, that was night, uh, that was night one. Night one, a guy blew his motor and Tyler Wolf hit, it must have been oil or water, and he KO'd the right front against the wall. And it's interesting, though. So, Carl, I'm going to ask you this question. So they got big blocks, right? Their wall around there is in, in blocks. And he hit that a ton, and the, the blocks and it came right off, right? Is that better right you look at like a track say i'll just use cedar lake as an example where they got the wall and then behind it it's just earth so if you hit it you ain't knocking it over you're just gonna the crunch point is the car do you think the fact that the wall dissipated that because the right front didn't look like it was that bad well the uh, the car is junk from the sounds of it and they're building another it- one I, that's uh, the right front was KO'd. I don't know what he got into it with. So, you know, you can look at it and say, hey, the wall gave. The problem with that is, Ryan, if there would have been another car behind him coming in there, they would have hit the edge of that wall and they could have wedged themselves in there. Um, so now you're dealing with with two different things. So um, I, I, I didn't think that was real safe. I can't believe, you know, a lot of those blocks like that are held together with rebar. Um, you know, like the freeway you know, we got the interest of the freeway barriers on the inside of the wall of Vikas Speedway, and they're all rebarred. Um, you, they come together, and you stick a rebar bar in there, so they can't do that. So um, I thought it was super weird, but he must have hit hard. Sounds like those things are about 3,500 pounds apiece. Um, he knocked one completely off there and moved another one. Great job to the track crew for getting that back up and going. But I, there was some lot of comments going about I need to look at. Again, racetracks, make sure you're aware of what's going on there. But I thought it, I, I was I was actually really, really, really surprised that it left a big hole in the wall like that. And like I said, if it would have been a pileup or someone else came through, it could have caused a lot of damage. Yeah, I guess I didn't realize that he actually killed the frame on that thing. So that's a unfortunate deal there. I thought that uh, it looked like it when I saw the picture. I didn't listen to anything, but it looked like the right front wasn't that bad. Um, yeah, that was that, that was crazy. Now, they... They got that up there pretty quick. They they replaced that like very quickly. So they were Johnny on the spot there. Um, another thing there, Rodney Sanders and he, again we talked about this last year. I mean, this dude's got no luck, right? I mean, he's just kind of uh, him and him and Jason Hughes. It seems like they were caught up in about everything on night number one. I mean, it was just unbelievable. Where's Jake O'Neill? Has anybody heard? What's going on? Where, is he even racing this year? I mean, he went from being like a obviously like, contender for a podium every single night to like he vanished. So anybody punch the buttons below, let us know what's going on with Jake O'Neill. Um yeah, anything anything else there from uh from the USMTS? Bert? No? No, I think I think that about covers it. Jake, Tim, Terry Phillips, Jason Hughes, Dan Ebert, the top four in points. Did Ebert go into the week leading the points or in second? I think he did. And uh, he was running good night number one. I think it was night one. And he uh, was night number two. Night number two. Did he break a drive shaft? I think he lost yeah. a drive shaft, didn't he? he a drive another shaft another guy. He's been fast, but just absolutely terrible luck in the sixty. XR Super Series down at Volunteer. We talked about that. Not only did Marlar win both nights, but did you guys happen to notice who got second both nights? Yes. Yeah. Um, well, actually, in uh, the big money race, I mean, 
Devin Moran almost got him at the end. But yeah, Devin Moran ran second. And actually, I was, I'm watching those races, and it's like, when did Devin Moran get good at these southern tracks? I mean, we knew he was good in Florida and on Midwest tracks, but you know, if he can master the southern tracks, he, he's definitely a force to be reckoned with uh, on the Lucas Tour. For sure. Was it Dale McDowell's race to win before he broke? It was looking that way, but yeah, then he, he lost, he had a drive shaft issue also. He lost a drive shaft. So, um, Coach, correct. Coach Krause, anything else from a uh, volunteer? Yeah. Um, a lot of Hoosier reps floating around checking tires after, um, coming across the scale and in victory lane. So interesting to see that Overton had his, um, American racers on all weekend again. So interesting to see some purple shirts floating around down there so uh maybe american racer and some of these drivers got the attention of hoosier on the national series as well i'm gonna do this right now too i'm a, I'm a pierce fan put the old rally cap on the not hot list rtj rtj is on the not hot list i don't yeah he's got a couple wins neither night in the top five what's going on there? How can a guy go from the year he had last year to like this year? He just doesn't even, he just doesn't even look that fast. Is it, is it too early to be concerned about RTJ or is this going to be something that can kind of transition into the rest of the season? I think, um, I think he's doing a little testing when he's not in Lucas races. I, you know, why not? You know, why not try to get an edge on your competition? And and he races all these shows. Half the Lucas guys don't come. You know what I mean? Um, if it's not a Lucas or World Outlaw guys, those guys stay home. So props to him. He runs all the shows. So maybe he's doing some testing. Maybe he's trying some things. You know, not a whole lot of money on the line. I didn't think the track conditions were great. Um, I didn't think the racing was great. Um, so uh, I'm going to say he's maybe being smart. Doesn't want to wreck some stuff. Um, trying some things. You don't have track position. Why push it? I don't know. Maybe he's uh, maybe he's growing up and getting some experience under his belt. I'm just, I'm just throwing that out there. Awesome. Yeah, and I, I, I was just going to say that it, it's too early to, to be concerned, but I was going to say, you know, if we get into Lucas races and, you know, we get into a string of Lucas races where – you know, he's not winning and not even running up front. Yeah, then there's time to be concerned. But in these non-Lucas races, I, I agree with, with Coach that, you know, he may be testing or, you know, just doesn't want to push it if, if the track's not right. He still is leading the points. So there is that in USMTSF for Speed Weeks. All right, let's jump into our 2024 pick em segment. Coach, brought to you by... Elevate-visual.com, video production. If you need any video uh, work done, any drone work done, um, Brandon was down in IMCA land again, whatever. I don't know what they had going on last week or the week before or whatever he's got going on. So he's Mr. Big Shot at IMCA. Does the video production for a lot of IMCA shows. So he's he's a racer, man. Um, I got him into it, and now all of a sudden that's all he's been doing. So uh, does great work. He's got some drone footage out there. Uh, so make sure you hop on his Facebook page and get to his website, elevate-visual.com. Thanks a lot, Brandon. So this past weekend, our movers and shakers, uh, my buddy Dan. Dan, plus 10. Plus 10, only guy in double-digit points. Incidentally, uh, Thursday the 11th, I think Thursday is the 11th. Birthday boy here this week. Both Dan's. We got Man Bun Dan. It's his birthday here today. It's Tuesday. Um Kind of a little bit different though in the points though. Man bun, man bun Dan one point. He's our uh, he's the co-host of Coach Kraus on our sister station, the Dirt Podcast. Um, of course, I'll, I'll give him a shout out. Congrats to Man Bun Dan, the birthday boy, for winning the Pickums. Congrats on that, or not the Pickums, but the March Madness brackets. So Dan was plus ten. Burton Changa plus seven. I was plus six. Curtis plus five. Kent and Coach plus three, Man Bun Dan at one, and then Good Jeff and Brad with the big goose egg down there at zero. Um, I don't have Mike on here. 
what Mike do this week? You got that in front of you, Coach Cross, while I'm looking here? What did, what did Mike do? Our points, uh, we don't have him written down anywhere. Huh. Sorry, Mike. He's getting married <laughs> this year. You got to give him some love, right? All right. So our points right now, Curtis at 76, Brad and Chonga 10 points back at 66. Dan jumped all the way up. He jumped over about three of us here in the, in the, a fourth, I guess, he's because he got three ahead of him. He's at 62. Bert, you and I tied at 60, one point ahead of Coach Krause. Kent at 51. Good Jeff at 42. And along with Van Bundan and Mike, uh, Mike's back there at 35. He had uh, Mike, uh, Mr. Bromance. We call him Mike Bromance because no one knows what his last name is, so we just call him Bromance. He had one point. One point. All right, so... He's in, but that's perfect, right? Because he usually has the bromance with Van Bundan. So one point for both of them. So a look ahead to this week's events brought to you by our friends at Daytona One Performance Lubricants. Um, Buck, of course, in the Hall of Fame for lubricants, the NASA Hall of Fame, that is. So pretty important to get your lubricants right when you're involving NASA. So he knows lubricants. Got a lot of lot of great products out there. You can find them on Facebook. You can find them on their website. Also, they're all about saving drivers money. We've talked at length, right? We've we kind of beaten a dead horse here with allow allow tire treatments, allow that stuff because they have products out there that aren't softeners. They're treatments that allow you to run tires longer. I know drivers. Right. In fact, the Gen X late model series, it's allowed. It's perfectly legal there. And some of the drivers speak in volumes. They're like, man, we've been running tires many, many nights because they have to run used ones and they can flat out tell the difference um, in their performance when they use these products. I also might know drivers that maybe aren't in, in those uh, in that particular series that say the same thing. They're like, look, I am not going to spend a hundred and fifty dollars a night on tires. I'm just not doing it. I'm just not doing it. I'm going to try to run my tires longer. I am, you know, I'm not all about cheating, but I'm not also not about going flat out broke because I got to put a brand new tire or two on my car every single night for three hundred dollars to win. So if you want to learn more about these products, call Chad 507-828-3536 Daytona One Performance Lubricants. So the ones that we're going to pick, we were going to pick the USMTS races, but them are now off the board. Um, Boot Hill has canceled the USMTS. I have not heard if they're going to reschedule that. But we have the Illini 100, Farmer City, World of Outlaw Late Models. Bert, who do you have? Uh, I'll, I'll go Bert, Coach Cross, and me. We'll just say who we have in our pick -em. So Illini 100, Farmer City. Bert, you go first. Who do you got? I have Bobby Pierce both nights. Coach? Yeah, the Outlaw boys are in trouble this weekend. Pierce both nights. Yeah, I, I think we're all kind of in agreement there. I also have Pierce. Might have a bold prediction on this race, so stay tuned for that. Hunt the front late model series down at Alltech. Hoosiers uh, versus American Racers. American Racers both nights. Brandon Overton. I think, they, I think they can run American races at the hunt in front. I'm pretty sure. Coach? Brandon, o Brandon Overton on both nights. Do we all, all three of us have Overton? Yeah, Overton both old nights. Yep. All right. World of Outlaw Sprints, I-55, Peavely, Missouri. Gravel both nights. Sheldon Hodenchild, both nights. Oh, he's going with Buggy Bobby. I'm going to stick with what Bert said there. Me and Bert. Obviously going to stay tied here if we keep picking the same <laughs> stuff. I got David Gravel both nights. High limit sprint cars. Night one at Texarkana. Night two at the Texas Motor Speedway in Fort Worth. And night three at the RPM Speedway. Bert, uh, high limit sprints. Courtney, Friday night. Sweet Saturday night. Courtney, Sunday. Coach? Uh, well, depends on, um, they got those, they roll that dice and they're loaded dice because these guys started their own series to start up front. So, um, Rico went in the first night and then sweet Friday, sweet on Saturday. I 
Sunday, NBA, whatever. Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Sorry. Sweets winning Saturday, Sunday. Rico is winning Friday. I'm going to go with Brent Marks all three nights. So finally, we have somebody different um, at the high limits. Brent Marks all three nights. And then uh, the Dirt Kings, Bert, you want to talk about that opening up their season at Shano. Yep, Dirt Kings will be opening up at Shano Speedway on Saturday night. And I am going with uh, Nick Anvilink, um for that race. Well, it's the only guy I know was even on the series. I don't. I mean, where, where are these guys even race? I mean, what's going on here, Bert? I mean, it's uh, now. Now it's just now. It's another series that I have to get. We're doing pickums, so now I'm gonna have to watch the race. Got a whole bunch of stuff going on. God, it's Masters weekend. There's golf going on. Aho and I are scratch golfers. We got to watch golf, right? So uh, I'm, I went with Anvilink as well. I did too, and I didn't know if people knew that we're scratch golfers, um, so I, I, we don't like to brag. Coach uh, actually has a cousin that is a scratch golfer. Uh, I usually just hit the ball and scratch my head, and he's over there scratching his nuts. So it just we're all scratching something. That's, that's scratch golf in our world. All right, the last lap here. A uh, few races going on this weekend. Bert, of course, excited. His home track opening up, Shano Speedway. The high flying half mile up in uh, Shano, Wisconsin. Dirt Kings in action. Red Cedar Speedway this Friday night. The Randy uh, Randy Bus Icebreaker um, Classic. Of course, he was a longtime head of teching for the Wissota Promoters Association. Cedar Lake. Uh, they're going to be racing this Saturday, and Ogilvy going to be opening up Saturday night as well. So, uh, kind of looking forward to. I think those three are on Dirt Race Central. And I believe is Dirt Kings on Race and Dirt, or is Bert? I'm pretty sure they are this year. Yeah, I can't remember. They're they're being streamed by somebody. I can't remember by who though. Bert, Bert Bert's gonna be there. He doesn't need. <laughs> well, I'm know gonna be there. Gonna, so. He's gonna be there. So <laughs> all right. So we kind of kept track. We're keeping track. Kenny Schrader. We talked about over and under. Is he gonna get to ten? He did get win number five this past weekend at I-55. Um. Did you see the news in the dirt late model world? Coltman Farms late model team driver Ethan Dotson, the 174 Mod Ace, out. Little speculation going on right now. I'm seeing a lot of buzz. That ride might be, uh, there might be somebody hopping into that ride. Have you guys heard anything? I haven't heard anything other than what I've heard from you. I'm seeing some buzz and nothing's confirmed. Nothing's confirmed yet. There's an, uh, there's a chance that maybe Hudson O'Neill going to be stepping into that ride. That that's a speculation right now. So guys, I was down in uh, went down to Arizona here a couple weeks back visit my dad down there. We went over to the Central Arizona Raceway in Casa Grande. Um, that's where Don Shaw did the early uh, Ernie Mincy early thaw that track and uh, I. I always, when I'm, when I'm watching, like, I kind of, you can look to see, you can tell, like, who's the good guy, right? And there's a gentleman down there, Bo Partain. This, this dude's a wheel, right? I mean, he dominated in the B mod and, or the IMCA sport mod and in the IMCA stock car down there. Guys, it's looking like he's going to get a little vacation. Uh, Kraus, did either one of you watch the video on the, so I text, I, I tag you, Kraus, in the text feed. Um, so what happened is, and I got a specific question for Kraus on this. So they have IMCA down there in central Arizona. They had a guy come in. I don't remember this guy's name, but he come in with a non-IMCA legal car, right? It was, he runs some XR races and he runs different stuff, but it's not IMCA legal. And he called the promoter and he said, look, I'm not legal. I'm not IMCA legal. Can I come tag the back? Can I come run? He says, you know what? You can run. Just don't finish in the top five. Well, an incident happened between that very driver and their their local hero, that Bo Partain. Partain gets wrecked in the deal, proceeds to get out of his car, punches a guy. Long story short, is flailing around with his helmet, hits an official with his helmet. This guy is getting 
booted. He's going to get probably at minimum a 30-day vacation from IMCA, this Bo Partain. The, the text feed is basically going crazy. Like, none of this would have happened. The promoter allowing this guy to race is a bunch of bullshit. As a promoter at the Viking Speedway, you're a Wissota track, you got Wissota rules. If a guy comes in and says, look, I'm not legal, can I run? Are you sending them packing, or are you going to let a situation like this happen? This number one reason why you have to send them packing is so you don't have a situation like this. Because you just there's there's way too many negatives to it. Then there are positives because the only positive is, is for one person. And that's that guy you're letting race. It's a negative for everybody else. It's a negative for the fans. It's a negative for the drivers, the competitors. He's taking a paycheck. You just, and I get it. We're all about getting drivers out there. You can't do it. You're, you're going to get a situation like this, or he is going to finish. And then you, what happens if he was in the text yet? Now you're going to have, say you got second three through 20 is going to be mad. Cause that's another more money into their pocket. You know what I mean? So you just can't do it. I completely get where he's coming from, but you can't, you can't do it. You can't even let him tag the back or do anything like that. It's a tough situation. And like you said, worst case scenario, here you go. You're going to get in a fight and it's going to take someone out and it's all heck's going to break loose. Should have never been out there in the begin with. That's the number one reason why you just, you just can't do it. Bert. Well, I, I totally agree. Uh, my question is, I mean, to race with soda, you have to have a, or I mean, to wait to race IMCA, you have to have an IMCA license. Did this guy have a license? If he no. didn't have a light, if he didn't have a license, it's cut and dry. He shouldn't be out there. Uh, but I mean, just like Coach said, I mean, for all those, uh, for all those other reasons, he shouldn't be out there either. And this right here, right? This is just another reason why all of these sanctioning bodies. Just need to get together and say, look, we have a stock car slash street stock. Let's get together, have a three-year plan to put together a set of rules so that they're the freaking same everywhere, and this problem never would have happened. Now, that guy would have been on the track, but, uh, boy, what an unfortunate situation. I I enjoyed watching that Partain down there, guys. He's a good race car driver. I don't know these guys from the man on the moon, but it uh, looks like he's going to be taking a little, a little bit of a break. So, Let's jump into our final segment here. Three bold predictions brought to you by our friends at Dirt Track Supply in Watertown, South Dakota. Home of the Aero Chassis. Um, they service a lot of different racetracks with their parts truck. Um, they can do any kind of fabricating bodies. They get any part you need. Great group of guys, Ron and Trevor Anderson. Dirt Track Supply in Watertown, South Dakota. So let's start with the accountability session here. And uh, got a few of us uh, had some stuff come off the board. And Bert, from what I see, you're literally the only one that had a correct prediction all week. Okay, so there's a <laughs> tip of the cap to Bert Lehman. So, but you said Jake Tim would get a hat, a hat trick of podiums. Well, that did not happen. He got fourth on night one. Even that he couldn't get a hat trick because only two nights race, but that fourth eliminated that. You said that. Big, sexy Brandon Overton would have a pair of podiums this weekend with one of them being a win. So, big, sexy fans, that's Burt Lehman. You jinxed him, okay? And you said there would be no racing in eastern Wisconsin this week. Um, I saw online there was people racing on uh, on the computer, iRacing. <laughs> um, I'm kidding. All right, I'm kidding. That was for Jeff. That was for Jeff. Uh, but, yeah, no racing in eastern Wisconsin. The weather did win. That's going to happen this week, so you got one on the board there. Good Jeff had uh, had three come off the board. He said, World of Outlaws, um, a non, at the World of Outlaw races this past weekend, U.S. 36 in Arrowhead, a non-World of Outlaw regular would get at least one win and two podiums, and both wins were by regulars. He said three podiums at Humboldt from the same chassis builder. And that right now is a no. There was no chassis builder that had three cars on a podium. If they reschedule, we can maybe revisit this down the road. And he said, and this is kind of a bad beat. Me and him kind of went the rounds on this one. He said, one day at Bulls Gap will cancel. Did not cancel. 
They moved it from Friday to Sunday. So he does not get that. That, that was close. That was close. But you go ahead and take that up with old Barry Braun on rescheduling that event. That was rescheduled, not canceled. So that was a, a no. Coach Krause, you had a couple come off the board here as well. You said David Gravel would sweep the weekend. Close, but no cigar. You said Jimmy Owens would uh, finish on the podium both nights with one of them being a win. That did not happen. And you said Dan Ebert would win the finale. So that one is still in limbo. We're not sure if they're going to cancel that or not. Do you know where he starts? Not sure. All right. um, I'm pretty sure. Do you think he came out of a B, did he not? I think he might have. I can't remember. Um, so my sure. prediction is still. It's but they pass like crazy. In USMTS, I mean, he could, he could win. Didn't he win from when he won it last year? He won from 10th or, or further back last year, didn't he? I believe so. Yeah. Yep. And I think he had to win it from 10th or further back. That was your prediction, wasn't it? So. So Jeff on his notes there did not actually put that down, but as of right now, that race may not happen anyway. All right. So Kenny in the peanut gallery, kind of a kind of a little flip flop here. He said Sheldon Hottenschild was going to win at US thirty six, and probably would have if he wouldn't have drove over a lapper. He said Hot Sauce Giovanni Selzy would win at Arrowhead, and Gravel and Shots would round out the podium. Now, that did not happen. And then I said Dan Ebert, Jake Tim would be one, two in points at the end of the weekend. Ebert had a rough weekend. He fell to fourth. And then I said that McDowell, Marlar, and Jimmy Owens would all finish in the top five both nights. That did not happen. So, Bert, I know you are still leading. I don't have the numbers and I didn't write them down, but I know you are still leading the way for sure in the correct predictions. And the peanut gallery is leading the way by a slight margin in correct percentages. So with that said, let's jump into our predictions for this week. We'll start with Bert. We'll go to coach. I got good Jeff. I got the peanut gallery, Kenny representing them and I uh, got my own picks. We make three laps around the track. Racing related picks that either do or do not happen. Bert, your first prediction. All right, let's go World of Outlaw Late Models. Um between the two rate between the two features, Illinois drivers will have four podium finishes. Between the two features, exactly four or at least oh, four? At least four. Okay. At least four podiums for Illinois drivers in the two nights combined. Okay. Coach. I'm going to go um, – we're going to go down to hunt the front. Um, Lucas Oil regulars are going to sweep uh, the hunt the front down there. So the Lucas Oil guys are going to win uh, both uh, nights down there and hunt the front. Well, that's interesting, right, being that you, you kind of hedge in your bets. You picked over 10 to win both nights. And he's not a Lucas Oil regular. Doesn't matter. It's where it is. It's about the fans, Ryan. This is about the fans <laughs> giving them giving them something interesting. Oh yeah, look at here. The Lucas guys are going to come down here. They're going to sweep. Uh, you see, you just it is what it is. I'll win it. Yes, it is win something. Off the record. Off the record. Which Lucas guy? I have no idea who's going to be there. You don't know who's going to show up. Um, so that's the tough part with those guys. You, really, you really don't. You can look through schedules, and I, I, it's to the point now. I type in B and Shepherd over ten. All their schedules pop up on my computer, or I type in D, and here's Dale McDowell and whoever else. So you got to go through all the schedules to figure out where these guys are racing. Yeah, and some of them don't update them very good. So good, Jeff here said uh, he's going to go to the Illini One Hundred at Farmer City. He said Dustin Sorensen, rookie contender for the World of Outlaw Late Models, will have a better average finish over the weekend than other the other Minnesota World of Outlaw guy, the B1 bomber, Brent Larson. So Dustin Sorensen with a better average finish than Brent Larson. Kenny, going to 100% go against everything that Coach Krause just said. 
He said Big Sexy Brandon Overton is going to double up at all text for the Hunt the Front Late Model Series. And I am going to go specifically with a driver. Actually, you know what? I'm going to start with this one. I'm going to kind of go off of Bert's pick their prediction a little bit. You made your prediction on the Illinois drivers. I also have an Illini, Team Illini drivers, right? They will sweep the podium at least one of the two nights. At least one of the two nights is going to be one, two, three Illini drivers at the Illini 100. All right, Bert, your second prediction. All right, I'm going to go Dirk Kings and Shano, and I'm going to say there will be at least 28 late models at Shano for the Dirk Kings show. Wow, that would be that would be outstanding. That would be good. Any word on any Western Wisconsin guys making the trip? No, I haven't heard anything. They haven't in the past, so I'm not expecting any to. It would be nice if they would. Right. I mean, they don't <laughs> think so. I mean, you don't want them Western guys coming over taking your guys' money. Well, I mean, Nick goes to the West and takes uh, <laughs> their money. <laughs> he does. He does. You're not wrong there. All right, Coach Kraus, your second prediction. Yeah, we're going to go to World of Outlaw Sprint Cars. Um, Kind of a parlay, a couple things going on here. Sheldon Hodenchild, this is bold. This is these are bold. You, listen, Bert, you got to write this down and take <laughs> notes on these. Okay, Sheldon Hodenchild is going to sweep the weekend and move into the top five in World of Outlaw point standings after the weekend. All right, Buggy Bobby going to have three nights in a row where he wins the feature. I got to be honest, I don't know that he can go three nights in a row without crashing. So. That is extremely bold, without question. All right. Good Jeff. He's going to go um, high limit sprint cars. Over the weekend, Brad Sweet will have at least two podiums and at least one win over the weekend. Brad Sweet, at least two podiums, at least one win in high limit sprint car action. All right. Kenny, going to go to the LINI 100. There will not be a driver that doubles up. Each night will have a different winner. He goes off the record. Sheppy and T Mac are going to be your future winners at Farmer City. But his prediction is this there will be no doubling up. So Bobby Pierce doubling up, not going to happen. According to according to Kenny, the same driver will not win both nights. My second one here, I'm going to go with an Illini guy here. Squirrel. Brian Shirley is going to finish on the podium Saturday night in the big show. Squirrel Brian Shirley on the podium. All right, Bert. All right. World of Outlaw Sprints. Uh, Donnie Schatz is going to stay consistent and have two, to two podium finishes this week. Two podiums at I-55 for Donnie Schatz. Coach Kraus. Pretty weak, Bert. Um, <laughs> throwing that out there. You gotta get. Gotta have some fun with you, Bert. You sitting That's in the hotel fine. room in Wisconsin somewhere. Gotta have some fun with you. We're going <laughs> bold again. I'm going bold. Staying kind of on the same format I'm on here. Bobby Pierce is going to sweep the weekend and move into the top ten in World of Outlaw point standings at the end of the night. So he's sitting in end of the weekend. He's sitting in 16th right now. He needs to go to 16th into the top 10. So sweeping the weekend and moving into the top 10 in points. All right. All right. Good Jeff here. He's going to go buggy Bobby Sheldon Hottenshaw is going to have a better average finish over the two nights than David Gravel. Kenny is going to go I-55 sprint cars as well. A World of Outlaw regular is going to double up on the weekend. So the same driver will win both. Now, the high limits race, so they might get some maybe PA guys down possibly. But a World of Outlaw regular will win both nights at I-55. And then I'm going to go bold. I'm going to go with a parlay myself. All right. 
This is going to be a winner's parlay, and I'm going to take a driver from each class as far as uh, as far as these go. In the late models, in Wasoda area tracks, because Cedar Lake's not a Wasoda track. Sam Mars will get at least one win this weekend. Dexton Cook will get at least one win this weekend. Shane Sabraski will get at least one win this weekend. Brady Larson, the 63 B mod, will get at least one win this weekend. So Sam Mars, Shane Sabraski, Dexton Cook, Brady Larson, all four of those drivers will visit Victory Lane this weekend. Take that as far as a bold parlay there, Coach Krause. So, all right, guys, that is episode, what the hell was that, 219? Is that what we're at? 219 times jabbering. Hope the fans enjoyed it. As always, I'm Ryan Aho. That is Burt Lehman. We got Coach Jeff Krause in the house. Thanks for tuning in to the One to Go Show. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. Hope you enjoyed the show. If you did, please leave a review and subscribe. It is Puka. And Gold Sports has another show out there by podcast, Facebook, and YouTube. It's the Tea with Miss McGill show. Covers hockey, high school hockey in northern Minnesota. So if you're into hockey, you can find us on podcast under Tea with Miss McGill. You can find us on YouTube or Facebook, Goat Sports Media, LLC. Uh, my, uh, yours truly and Coach Reed Larson, we break it down every week. We also do some interesting interviews. We'd love to have you. So tell your friends, tell your enemies, and we'll catch you next week.